Hey y'all, welcome to the Gadget Inspector channel. So I've already done a video on Remote ID, um, talking about some of the details, and I gave you, I think, five options for Remote ID modules that you can purchase. It's been a few months since then. Since that time, Remote ID has been delayed, but let me read you something real quick. This is from the FAA website. It says, drone pilots are expected to comply with the September 16, 2023 compliance date for remote ID. However, the FAA understands that some drone pilots may not be able to comply because of limited availability of broadcast modules and lack of approved FAA recognized identification areas. I talk about all of that in the other video. I'll put a link uh, in the description for you to check that out. In those instances, the FAA will consider all factors in determining whether to, to take enforcement action through March 16, 2024. So to me, that's kind of saying we've delayed it until March 16, 2024, but you should start getting yourself ready for this now. So you need to start acquiring the um, remote ID modules right now. If you read that a different way or you have some information that I don't have, share that with us in the comment section below. But that's what I'm gleaning from what the FAA is saying on their website. All right, so one of the five modules that I showed you in the previous video was the drone tag beacon. Okay, so I talked about this uh, module in the other video. We're going to focus on this one today. But I actually have another one that's about a third of the cost of this one. And I don't know if it's actually working. I can't confirm if it's working or not. So... You get what you pay for, I guess. Now, I originally was going to use my pair of Anafi to demonstrate the drone tag beacon because it does not have remote ID built in. Parrot no longer um, supports consumer drones, so there's no plans for adding it. But I feel like it's an older drone. I wanted to use something more current, so I'm going to be using the Potensic Atom today. It does not have remote ID built in. It is sub 100, 250 grams, though. And based on my understanding, drones that are 250 grams, less than 250 grams, do not require registration with the FAA. Only drones that are required to be registered are required to have a remote identification broadcast, signal broadcast. That's based on what I'm reading. So let me repeat that. If the drone is under 250 grams, it does not have to be registered and therefore is not subject to remote ID. That's only if you're flying recreationally. If you're flying part 107, then you are required to register and remote ID will then be a requirement. All right, it's December 31st, happy New Year's Eve. And I'm checking the drone tag website right now. It's priced at 219. Definitely come down in price since I did that last video. Uh, so 219 for the drone tag beacon. And let's see, it is available for back order. Expected shipping end of January 2024. So that's one of the things I was encountering when I did that uh, last video. And it was really the reason why I did the video, just to see what options were out there. So yeah, you might run into this where, you know, there's some lead time between when you order and when it ships. So just keep that in mind and keep that March 2024 date in mind as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about this drone tag beacon. Then we're gonna mount it to the Potensic Atom and take it for a flight and check it out. But the first thing you're gonna need to do is download the drone tag app. You're gonna need to create uh, an account and register. There's also a web version of the drone tag app. Uh, I haven't really uh, played around with that yet. I'm mainly using the mobile app. I have an iPhone 13, so iOS. The next thing you need to do then is to actually register your beacon. Register the drone tag beacon and get that all set up. Just make sure the device is charged up and ready to go before you uh, start your setup. All right, now I have already registered my device and got it all set up, but what you're gonna do is come on over here to my devices and uh, you can see mine has already uh, been set up. 
but you're going to click on register new up in the upper right hand corner before you do that though make sure you power on your drone tag beacon you should see uh, two green led lights and an amber pulsing light hit register new and it's going to search for your device and find your device you can also see here you can uh, enter your serial number manually to get that set up and then just walk through that it's very simple and then you'll be ready to go hey real quick let me show you what uh what you get in the box so here's the box here and see if i can do this with one hand and you can see up there at the top it's telling you what the button functions are and features and what the led lights are doing but i'm going to talk through that in more detail a little bit later um, you get two small velcro strips I've already used both of those, so sorry, I can't show you. I'll show you later. Uh, you get a little quick start guide here, stickers. There's a charging, little charging cable here, and I believe it's USB-C. Uh, no, it's actually micro USB. Micro USB, guys? Come on. <laughs> and there's the drone tag beacon right there. Dog Pound holding it down in Michigan. Go Browns. <laughs> All right, let's get to what we actually are out here to do. We're going to talk about what these LED indicator lights mean. Um, there's also a really good knowledge base in the, uh, in the drone tag app. It's in the help, and that's going to give you a picture of what each of the LED indicator lights um indicate <laughs> okay so once again when you short press the power button you will get blue indicator lights which is giving you the battery level to power on we're going to hold down the button for a couple of seconds and you can see we have two green and one sort of amber or yellow slow pulsing light there and what that means is it's looking to acquire GPS satellites. If all three lights were green, that means it has adequate satellites. Okay, now let's go over to the app. You see in the upper left hand corner here, it says drone tag beacon. It's giving us the battery level. It has a green indicator light um, there. So indicating that it is connected to the device. We're going to click on that. Now watch the device. Watch what happens here in the app. It says poor signal for satellites. Um, Bluetooth good signal so right now it's in the process of acquiring satellites okay now you see what happened here you have three white flashing lights that indicates that the device the drone tag beacon is in flight now obviously it's not actually in flight but what that means is it has enough satellites you can attach it to your drone and put it up in the air. It is now emitting a remote identification. Okay, so let's just imagine that the module is attached to our drone. We're in flight, we're flying. Let's go to the main page here. Look down there at the bottom. It says go to currently ongoing flight. We'll click on that and boom. Now we can get all kinds of telemetry. Um, so there you can see the what is it longer longitudinal and latitudinal position um, so your location your gps location heading and speed um, not sure why it was showing a speed there because the module is stationary yeah it's kind of fluctuating but obviously it's not moving but uh, it's giving height so that would be the height of the the drone and then altitude pressure i would imagine that's um you know above sea level where we are in terms of altitude above sea level i'm um, not 100 percent certain of that i'll see if there's anything in the materials that um, will, will explain exactly what these uh, data points are here um, other location accuracy and speed accuracy within plus or minus seven miles okay so it's kind of giving you um the the error rate I guess in terms of the accuracy of the data that's being provided in the telemetry and status 
So uh, once again, if there's anything in the materials that explain what each of these data points is, I'll go ahead and um, throw that up on the screen. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the uh, Potensic Atom out here all powered up and ready to go. We've got the Drone Tag Beacon all powered up. You can see by the three white flashing LED lights, we are in in-flight mode. So we are ready to launch. And as you can see, we have the Drone Tag app up and ready to go. It's showing us that we are connected. We are in in-flight mode. We have an excellent Bluetooth signal and we have eight GPS satellites. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on go to currently ongoing flight. And there is our telemetry data. All right, I'm gonna sit this down. I'm gonna grab the controller and let's go ahead and record video, why not? And we're gonna do an auto takeoff. We've got 16 satellites, so we have sufficient uh, sufficient uh, satellites to get in the air. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna let it sit there for a moment. So it's showing we're at uh, 4.9 feet in terms of height. The app is showing 2.6 feet. But remember over here, um, we have a little bit of a margin for error here in terms of location and speed. So we have to keep that in mind. It's going to be close, but not exact. We'll say that. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, drone tag app, but let's go ahead and take the drone up. Give it some altitude straight up in the air here. Beautiful day here. Lots of sunshine and beautiful clouds. Take it up about 100 feet and park it. Okay, we should be recording the screen now so we can kind of compare information. Um, oh, pretty close now, 106 to 104. All right, let's change the heading. I'm going to turn or yaw the drone to the left. And yes, the heading is changing in the drone tag app. All right, now let's go ahead and give the drone some uh, pitch. So we're going to pitch straight ahead. And uh, let's see how well the app tracks the drone. There we go. We'll go out a little ways. So there's a clear distinction between where we are and where the drone is. And let's just see. So uh, I picked up our speed at 10 miles per hour. And I wonder if I pinch in, if it'll show a change in the location of the drone, unless I mistake what that orange triangle is. But nonetheless, um, let's see. Let's see if the location is changing in real time as well. It is. Okay, keeping the drone in my line of sight, but we'll fly out a little ways and park it and check, check what our app is showing us. Okay, I'll fly it to about there. We're out about 715 feet. And see, it doesn't give distance or anything, it doesn't look like, right? Uh, but our height and our heading, and it had miles per hour. The one thing we know, or we can have some kind of comfort in, is that this, uh, the module is emitting a remote identification signal and that's the whole point right i may not be able to pick up that signal with my phone um, past a certain distance 
but that does not mean, you know, other devices won't be able to pick it up, if that makes sense. All right, let's turn around and head on back here. Okay, so it looks like the, uh, the green little indicator there at the top changed to orange. And it says, previous flight was finished. Another flight is ready to begin. Start another flight with your drone tag device. So I guess it, it's, it went out of range, is my guess. All right, there's the Atom. Now let's see if, it, uh, if the app has picked it back up again. It has, okay. Yeah, so it looks like uh, you can go out of range of the app, but like I said, that does not mean the module is not still emitting a remote ID signal. Um, there must be something with my particular phone, the iPhone 13 here, where it's maybe it's using uh, Bluetooth. Not real sure what it's using to uh, to monitor the uh, or connect to the uh, the beacon there. And uh, guys from Drone Drone Tag, if you're watching, feel free to comment below or uh, we can correspond via email just to make sure the folks get uh, accurate information. But I'm just out here. I'm a regular guy, just like everybody else. And so what I'm encountering in terms of questions, they will likely encounter as well. So if I get some answers and clarification, I'll definitely do a follow-up video and uh, provide those clarifications, okay? All right, but for my money, I feel like this is working as intended. I have another remote ID module that uh, was provided to me by Holy Stone. And while it is much, much less expensive, I was not able to confirm that it was emitting a remote identification signal. There is an app you can uh, download that picks up those signals. And as a matter of fact, maybe I'll do that right now. Okay guys, so the name of that app is called Drone Scanner. That's the one I'm using right now. So as you can see, um, it is identifying one drone <laughs> and there is the remote identification number right down there at the bottom okay and it's giving us uh the agl so how how high it is as well let's see how far out we can go and before it loses uh connection with that uh, remote id signal so let's just uh Pitch ahead here. And so far it's still green. Okay. Just flying the atom a little bit. And it still looks like it's still connected there. Okay. All right, I think that's good. Let's take a look. Oh, very nice. So as you can see, it has definitely um, tracked the drone. So you can see there's two of those little uh, map flags, one for me and one for the drone or the uh, remote ID signal as it were and once again let's see what kind of information we can get now this is one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about this app is available to anyone the karens and kins of the world i think it's ken right <laughs> so anybody can track you uh let's see okay it's showing the distance from me height um yeah, and I, I guess it's, yeah, it's giving my location and it's giving the location of the drone. So that's one of the things that people are concerned about. Now that turned to red. I'm not sure what that means. Okay. 
still in green. Let's push ahead a little bit. Let's go out to about a thousand, thousand feet or so. And yeah, it's still tracking. So yeah, I think that pretty much confirms for me that the drone tag beacon is continuing to emit that um, remote identification signal. I would say use of the drone tag beacon is really easy. It's really simple. Um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it takes very much to get it all set up and connected and once it's in use, it's, it seems to be doing what it's advertised to do. And in terms of performance, I didn't notice any difference in how the drone was performing. I tried to mount it, you know, the, the drone itself, the equilibrium is more towards the front because the back of the drone is a little heavier. You know, I didn't get real scientific with it. I just kind of, you know, eyed it and guesstimated the best place to uh, put it, you know, with the goal of not throwing off its equilibrium. Its equilibrium. <laughs> I always get tongue tied, you guys, when it's cold. It's, it's cold, I'm shivering a little bit, so I, I trip over my words sometimes. But anyway, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say, that uh, mounting, when you go to mount the drone tag on your drone, just Keep in mind, it could change the performance of the drone based on where you uh, place it. And I think trying to place it as much in the middle in terms of the balance of the weight, trying to place it right in the in middle of that as much as you can, I think is a, a good idea. The other observation here is um, the Velcro that you use, it comes with two Velcro strips the uh, drone tag beacon comes with two Velcro strips, little tiny strips, and that's how you attach it to the, uh, to the drone. And uh, it seems to hold really, really well. They're using a 3M dual lock Velcro, and I actually ordered more of that uh, myself from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box if you're interested in that. But let me, uh, let me go ahead and land and I'll show you, I'll show you what that looks like. But the one thing I don't like, you know, I don't like anything sticking on my drones. This, you know, the Velcro, this is pretty discreet because it's clear. It doesn't stand out that much. It, you have to do the same thing if you mount a, um, a light, if you're, you're flying at night and you mount a strobe on your drone. Same difference, you're gonna have that Velcro strip on there. It's not a big deal, but you know, I like my drones to look the way they look out of the box. All right, so take a look at how I have this mounted here, right? So this is how the uh, beacon comes. It has this uh, Velcro already installed. You get two of these, all right? So I have uh, this mounted to the Potensic Atom. It is fairly discreet. It's not, you know, it's, it's not obnoxious. It doesn't stand out that much, so no big deal. And it does lock in really, really well. So you, you know, make sure you push that down so it locks in. You may even hear it lock. And that thing, it's not moving. I have full confidence in that, that it's not going anywhere. So there you go. Oh, yeah.